Welcome to Jurassic Park. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know before you start doing dungeons. Uh, now I had planned for this to be an entire progression guide, where we would take you from dragon armor through the stages, adaptive, shadow assassin, etc, 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 and tell you everything that you need to get in what order. Uh, as it goes, after going through the dungeon hub, going through how the dungeon works, and all the secrets, and the traps, and the trap rooms, and the puzzles, and the things, this video ended up being half an hour long. So I've decided to split them into two videos. This one's going to be a longer one explaining all of the bare essentials. And then the next one is going to go more into the equipment, the magical power, and exactly how you can get there. But if you've not done any dungeons before, then trust me when I say that this is going to cover absolutely everything you need to know. As always, if I did miss something, drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to all of you guys. I do try. Now, if we hop on over to the dungeon hub, we will end up with three crucial NPCs in front of us. One of us over to the side here, and if we hop down to the bottom, uh, then we will see down here we've got Guildford. Uh, but if we head back up to the top, First things first, we're going to discuss Malik. Now, Malik is an NPC which will help you put stars on, dungeonize as it's called, and salvage your dungeon materials. Now keep in mind that when you salvage something, you will get rid of it forever. Uh, so many of the mobs within dungeons will drop armor, weapons, which are completely useless. You won't need them, so you'll salvage them for essence, which you can then either sell on the bazaar, or if you come down to this essence shop, we do have a wither essence and an undead essence. The undead essence shop will give you boosts within dungeons, of which boss luck is a very important one, so you'll want to max that one out. And Wither Essence will give you buffs both within and outside of dungeons. So this 5 strength is permanently on my profile, even when I'm not in a dungeon. To salvage something, you simply put it in this slot here and click the button. And if you want to put stars on something, you come to this Essence Crafting in the top corner, go on to convert to dungeon item if it's a regular item which you'd like to begin putting stars on or you can use the upgrade items if it's already a dungeon item or already has stars on. Now certain items can be converted into dungeon items which means that they may have viability inside dungeons. Based on your catacombs level your armor which is dungeonized or has stars on it will gain a boost while you are inside the dungeon. It's this boost which is how people end up with thousands and thousands of health and mana and defense and will be necessary for completing the later floors. What that means is practice is that once you get past those earlier floors, you won't be able to use non-dungeonized armor. Some of you will struggle because you'll want to dungeonize a piece of armor, but it'll have a certain requirement once it's been dungeonized. Now, if you'd like a further guide into absolutely all of the things that can be dungeonized, there is a menu here of which you can see Silent Death, Fell Sword, Bonzo Staff Adaptive, which we'll get into later. Uh, and then there's a couple of other, if we look in the Dragon Armor set especially, this is where people will know them. You've probably got a young set. You've probably got a strong set. We are gonna be assuming that you've got at least one set of Dragon Armor. If you're not yet at that point, uh, I will be releasing a another tutorial a little bit later which shows you how to get to that. Now, once you've got your basic setup, I'm just going to be using my superior. Uh, keep in mind that this is dungeonized, so if you have a look in the stats in grey, the stats in red and green are going to be my damage and non-damage stats outside of dungeons. The blue ones are going to be that affected by the reforge, yellow is hot potato books and fuming potato books, and then the grey is what that stat is actually going to be because of my catacombs level when I enter a dungeon. Now it will be replaced by this, so if we have a look at my strength at the top, the strength for these boots will become 122, not 144. Uh, but you can use those stats in grey to get a rough estimate of where you think you'll be. Things like hot potato books and gemstones do also increase your armour within dungeons. So once you've got your maxed out set, for most people that'll be a Necron set, a Storm set, Gold or set, that kind of thing. You will want to start hypermaxing it. Now, if we come over here, we will find Ophelia. She's an NPC shop just like any other, but when you speak to her eventually, uh, then you'll be able to find a couple of things. 
Firstly, we have these dark goggles, shadow goggles, and wither goggles. Now, these do have relatively high catacombs requirements, but they will also be the best right-click mage gear in the game. Now, when I say right-click mage, I'm referring to anything that uses an ability. So if you're clicking with a spirit scepter, if you're using a bonzo staff, if you're using a hyperion, that will be ability damage, and so this will increase them. Left-click mage is something we'll get into a little bit later, uh, but what I will say is that if you're trying to late-game left-click mage, uh, and I will say I am guilty of trying to LCM too early, uh, but please make sure you're Kata 50. Kata 49 at least, unless you're LCMing on a lower floor. There is one other instance in which it might be viable for floor 6, but we'll get into that later. There's also these things called dungeon potions, as you can only drink one potion per dungeon. These potions will give you a multitude of effects, which means it's really helpful to stock up on these, use them at the start of the dungeon. There is a little bit of a bug where if you throw a splash potion in the air and then start drinking your dungeon potion before the splash potion lands, you will be able to get those extra effects. So people will sometimes use that for a rabbit potion on top of their dungeon potion. Finally, if we go back to the start, then we've got this little guy over here, Cro Cro Croatius? Croatius? Treasures! If you speak to treasures, uh, I haven't done a dungeon run recently, uh, but it will come up with your previous dungeon runs, and if you haven't opened the chest at the end of the dungeon, it will give you the selection of chests and allow you to open one at a later date. This is really important if you get a drop which is expensive, but you don't have enough money for it. So, say you drop a recombobulator, that costs for 5 million coins from chest and will sell on the bazaar for between 7 to 9 mil depending on the market. So, it's a worthy thing to buy, but if you've not got 5 mil in your purse or your bank, then you can go, save that money up, come back to Mr. Treasures over here, uh, and then you'll be able to buy it again later. Or, if you've got a dungeon chest key in your inventory, then you'll be able to open another chest. Now, we'll get into how chests and score and stuff is calculated later, uh, but finally we are just going to come up to Mort. Mort is how you actually enter the dungeon itself. Now, we've got quite a lot of things on screen at the moment. Uh, this little redstone torch down the bottom just explains some things. It gives you a couple of... Uh, a bit of advice. Any speed above is nerfed by 33%, so you will need to use speed potions and things. Uh, you can have a look at it if you want to, but it's just kind of a couple of use useful-ish things. Uh, this nether star right here will show you your five classes, those being healer, mage, berserker, archer, and tank. Uh, I am going to be going through different classes, but if I do forget to mention either healer or archer is probably the most likely, then whatever I'm saying about berserker also applies to archer, or vice versa. And whatever you do for healer is probably going to be the same as berserker, uh, unless there's a couple of instances where they'll need to make some minor changes. Mage is its own class, sometimes it's viable, sometimes it's not, but we'll get into exactly when. Now, these things at the top will show you each individual floor and your catacombs level required to enter it. If you want to check your catacombs level, skyblock menu, skills, dungeoneering, uh, and then if you hover over here, it will tell you your catacombs level. So mine is currently 47, and I'm 90.4% of the way to 48. I will get it to 50 eventually, I promise. Anyway, uh, from here we've got entrance to floor 7. And then if you click this skull, it will convert them to M1, or Master Mode Floor 1, to M7, Master Mode Floor 7. There are some differences between the two fights, but generally speaking, M1 is going to be the same as Floor 1, but with mobs that are harder than those on Floor 7. So M1 is considered to be after Floor 7. If you click on one of these, it will either let you enter the dungeon if you're in a party, or if you don't have a party, there we go, it'll just take us out of the menu, uh, but it'll give us this option here, find a party, which also appears on the main screen. Clicking on that will give us a whole bunch of heads, a refresh button here, which just refreshes the number of people on there, this start a new button, and a search settings button. First things first, I'll just show you this start queue. Essentially, if you don't have a party, there aren't any on Party Finder, you can select whether you want Master Mode or regular catacombs, which floor you'd like to enter, so between entrance and floor seven. We're not really gonna be counting entrance. Entrance is only really a practice run, and once you've got the one completion, you'll want to be doing floor ones, because floor one has something called collection, which entrance does not. 
You can also set a class level and a catacombs level here. Uh, and if you want any particular note, you can put that in too. If you click this green block, then go back onto this thing, hit refresh a couple of times. You will eventually see yourself there and then you can delist your group using that library book here. Now class level works a little bit differently to catacombs level. It does also appear in your dungeoneering menu just beneath. So we have healer, mage, berserker, archer and tank. This will level up substantially slower than your catacombs level. But even if you're not playing that class, as long as there is a person playing that class, in your party when the dungeon is completed, you will gain a percentage of their EXP. Now, once we've found a party, we'll be able to hop into dungeons. If you have a look at this menu here, it will simply be everybody else who has queued. A lot of them will be carries, so if you do want to play legitimately, careful about when it says three mil completion, SPZ verified, completion carry, verified S carry. All that's saying is you pay me money and I carry you, but you do have to be a little bit careful. That one there mentions SBZ. There are discords where you can do this to stop yourself getting scammed, but otherwise you have to be a little bit careful because they might just take your money and leave. Once you've joined a party, and I am just gonna party with my friends so I can hop into the dungeon in a second, then if you're the party leader, you'll be able to click on these, or you can wait for the party leader to join and you'll get warped in. If you are the party leader and you happen to have a full party of five, you can use the command right here, slash join dungeon catacombs or slash join dungeon master underscore catacombs and then the level you'd like to join respectively it won't warp you in unless you have a full party of five but if you do then that's a quicker way of entering the dungeon now i've just partied someone and now that we're in a party i am going to be able to click on this click on floor seven which we'll use for the purposes of this exercise and hop into the dungeon it will take a second to create the dungeon and then it will warp everybody in once we're in the dungeon, we'll have this little guy up here, Mort. Once you've started the dungeon, you'll be able to pick which class you want to play, or you can just click on that red pane glass there to ready up, or you can right-click to gain further information about the class. When you first speak to Mort, he will give you this dungeon orb. Please look after it. Please keep it in your inventory. If you don't have it, then none of your dungeon stats will apply, which will end up being very, very bad. Okay, I've just had to re-enter the dungeon. As it turns out, if you join with two people and the first one leaves, uh, then sometimes it bugs and breaks out. But now that we're in the dungeon, in this ninth hot bar slot here, we will see a map. I also have this map in the bottom corner down here. That is because of my mod. Most Skyblock related mods will have one of these. Uh, my particular one is Skyblock Extras. Uh, there's also Better Dungeon Map from Chat Triggers. Skyblock Add-ons has it. There's loads and loads of mods that will have it. If you don't have any mods again, video will come on that at some point. As soon as I get around to it. Now, we'll have two types of rooms with this brownish color here. The first one is going to be, as we're in at the moment, one of these mob rooms. I'll just turn my sound down a little bit because we've got the implosion effect on. Uh, and these mob rooms will simply require you to kill all of the mobs in the room with a star next to their name. When they die, it will drop a wither key and a... Sometimes it's a revive stone, sometimes it's super boom. You can get a few different things. That wither key will then let you click on this black door, which will take you to the next room. Uh, now, this particular room you'll see here, the enemies don't have stars on their name. That's because this one is what's called a mini-boss room. In here, we'll either have a Shadow Assassin, a Lost Adventurer, or a variant thereof. Uh, and rather than having to kill these mobs... Okay, that's a glitch name tag, just ignore those. Uh, but rather than having to kill the mobs, we will have to kill that Lost Adventurer. Here, it's a Holy Adventurer, and as soon as we kill that, we'll see again with a key and a revive stone. Now, the reason we've got a wither key here uh, is because we're next to this little black door here. The room next to the black doors will always drop a wither key, and it's that key that allows you to open the doors and move to the next one. Here, we've got another mini boss room. This one has a frozen adventurer, which has a chance of dropping something called a spray wand. Uh, and again, once we've killed it, you'll see there with a key because it's in that room. And that time we got a Super Boom TNT. Uh, now, Super Boom TNT is a usable item. Once you've used it, it will vanish out of your inventory. But that can be used to open certain secrets, which we'll get to in a second. Here we have a Shadow Assassin, but again, it dies. Uh, now, these blessings aren't physical items that you pick up. Uh, and will instead provide everybody in that dungeon temporary stats for this dungeon. That's the reason why if you're pushing for a harder dungeon and you haven't yet, haven't yet got completion, it will sometimes be easier if you get all of the secrets because some of them will be blessings which will give you additional stats. You'll also see that my inventory is filling up with random loot, most of which I'm going to salvage. 
Now we'll come to this room with a tree. This will spawn in every room and it's called a fairy room. These fairies here will take four hits of damage. Uh, and once you've taken them out, they will either drop a revive stone if you're alive, or if you hit them when you're dead as a ghost, they will just revive you back into the dungeon. Uh, now we'll keep going. We've got another mini boss room here. Let me skip through this one quickly. Uh, open this with a key. And another one. The number of rooms that do spawn before something called the blood door is random. This time we just had to get a particular, uh, particularly large amount of them. But there we go. Once we get to the end of the wither room trail, we will end up with this blood key. You can use this blood key on the blood door, which will start a real world timer of mobs spawning in. Now people will usually have somebody rushing to the blood room or blood rushing to open this door as quickly as possible as if you have a party that's very fast at clearing the dungeon this is the bottleneck in terms of speed. Now because I'm on floor 7 and M7 will have the same there will be this harder mob here called a giant uh, we also, I'm not sure if you saw it there, uh, but there was a Bonzo. You'll get little miniature versions of previous bosses spawning in. Now, the rest of these will just be simple. Some of them have special abilities, like that one teleports. There's another one that splits into silverfish. Uh, but generally, you don't. they don't really matter too much. Uh, now, I am wearing Superior Dragon as opposed to my Mage Armor at the moment. Uh, but my left-click attack here, which is what we would refer to as left-click Mage, uh, you'll often have people sat in the dungeon room uh, using better Mage gear than Superior Armor uh, and killing these, or an Archer if you don't have a strong left-click Mage. Because the faster you kill these mobs, the faster more spawn in, and the faster the Blood Room gets cleared. Once the Blood Room is cleared, which we'll get to in a second, Second. Then in here, a little portal will open, uh, and that portal will take you to the boss fight, which is different for every floor. I'm going to leave this room for a minute. You do want to be careful leaving that room just to make sure the mobs don't follow you. And we'll get into something called secrets. Now, if you look just between my health and mana and a little bit up, you'll see that secrets bar. In each room, there will be a certain number of secrets. Some rooms don't have them, like this one, and so if you look at the map, we'll see there, there's a green tick on this room to show it's been completed fully, as opposed to the white ticks on other rooms, which means it's been completed but is missing secrets. I know for a fact, and I have my mods, that that secret down there is an item. This secret here is a wither essence, so you will need to click on it and it will give you a wither essence. If you're picking up an item secret, as it goes, it's gone into my dungeon sack, which you can buy from Elizabeth, but you do need to be careful you don't have a full inventory, because if you pick up an item secret with a full inventory, it will delete the secret and you'll never be able to get that score back. This tripwire here is an example of a trap. Standing on it will do a percentage of your health as damage, so you do need to be careful. But they can be quite useful for healer, trying to get milestones, which we'll get into later. Uh, as milestones are required to gain EXP, and the healer gains their EXP from shock horror, healing things. Now, I'm not going to get all of the secrets in this room, uh, but for each dungeon, there is a certain percentage of secrets which you'll need to get for that secret total to be counted as complete. For floor 7 and all master mode floors, this is 100%, but for the other floors, this is as is on screen now. If I were to press tab, you'll see a few different things on this tab menu. Uh, on the first page, you'll see everybody in the party, their rank, their class level as well as how many revive stones they have, which if your whole team is dead in a boss fight can be quite useful. You've also got the number of deaths, which is important as every death will lose you two score. The number of secrets found, the number of crypts, which are a little skull-like gravestone thing. They look just like this. You can either use Super Boom TNT on them to blow them up uh, and you'll spawn one of these mobs, or if you are playing Mage or Archer, your ability can destroy them. Uh, and you'll see there under Discoveries, Crypts has now gone up to two. This will give you a maximum of five additional score, uh, but assuming you're going for the highest score possible, it's always worth getting five crypts. It will also show you the number of puzzles on the second page, your secrets found, which will turn green once you've got a high enough percentage, uh, and then a couple of other information which you don't really need to worry about too much. Now, if I zoom back through these rooms into one of you, I'm hoping that we're not just going to end up in another mob room. 
Okay, this one's a mob room. This one's a mob room. This one's a mob room. Okay, we've got unlucky with that one. Let me zoom around to the other side and I'll get back to you in a second. Here we go. So we've made it to something finally which isn't a mob room. Those mob rooms are the ones appearing in brown. Uh, there's another example of a secret which actually has come from this room. But because it's a bat has flown into the next room. So we will grab you real quick. You'll see there it dropped the blessing of wisdom. Uh, now... Of the purple rooms, these are puzzle rooms. They'll all have specific ways of completing them. I'm going to go through each of them individually. Now, first, ice puzzle is a great place to start. All you have to do is step on the ice blocks, get from one side to the other while stepping on all blocks without going back on yourself or the ice will be destroyed. Once you've got to the end of all of them, uh, you complete this final pathway and get to here. Then the gate will go up and you'll be able to click on that chest right there. Here we are at another type of puzzle room, which is actually quite a lucky one to get if you've just started, called Ario, Ario, the, the, this omniscient guy, who will ask you three questions. Do not click the wrong one because the room will be considered failed and a failed room cannot be reattempted. Uh, but once all three questions have been completed successfully, you'll be given a special blessing called the blessing of time, which buffs a whole bunch of stats far more than a regular blessing and could be really helpful in completing a brand new floor. Now here we've got another puzzle room, this one usually referred to as creeper room. Uh, for this one you will need a bow, keep in mind the soul stealer bow will not work, you won't be able to shoot anything with it as it shoots skulls and not arrows. Uh, now you'll see here my mobs are helping out a little bit. Uh, but what you'll need to do is shoot the two blocks to form a laser. As long as that laser goes through the creeper, then you've made one in the right position. Uh, and once we shoot a couple of lasers through this, one more, uh, then the creeper will explode, revealing a chest at the bottom. Make sure that you claim this chest or the room won't technically be done. As I said as well, you can technically do this uh, with melee. But I would not recommend it as you'll end up teleporting everywhere and it's far, far faster to just use a bow. Here we've got the three weirdos. Uh, and thank you to Zoe for helping me find this one. Uh, but you'll have three NPCs here. If you speak to them all, they'll give you a riddle that doesn't make sense. Uh, in theory, it's one of the truce lie puzzles, but in actuality, some of them are just illogical. Uh, but because of mods, this chest lights up. I know it's that one. Click on that and the puzzle is solved. Next up, we've got one of the more annoying puzzles. This one's water. So the way it works is that down here, we will have a chest that we need to reach by retracting these pistons. Whenever water falls into one of these five slots, the piston will retract or constrict, I suppose, depending on which position it's in at the moment. As it goes, I've got solvers for this. So I know that if I pull this lever to let the water drop down from the top, it will follow that path exactly and end up in the green. Uh, as soon as it gets to there, it will drop down to the green and this one will retract. Now, you can follow this with just the solvers, or sometimes you can try and be a little bit tricksy with things. So I can see there, I need red. There is a green and emerald block in the way. But if I pull uh, the gold and emerald block, then the water will start going that way. So I have to be quick about it. First doing that one, then doing that one. Oh, and it's gone into orange. That's the problem when you try and be tricky. We will also get green. Uh, but now because we've got that one, we will have to get it again, which is a bit of a pain to do. Having said that, these two are next to each other. So we will be able to do something similar only this time we'll do it properly and not accidentally drop water. Oh no, we've actually gone down the wrong path there. Uh, you can reach that side by going up that path, but you can't reach up that path by going down that side. I'm not sure if that makes... I'm using a lot of this and that to explain it. Uh, if you don't want to think and you don't know how it works, look at lever, pull lever. Oh, no, don't look at lever. I've lied. It's, it's, it's all going wrong. It's uh, This is why you have to be careful with puzzles. Uh, hang on. Get you. We'll, we'll, we'll fix this one and I'll get to the point where all the levers have gone through. I promise I'm usually better. There we go. I've got the water going down all three. 
It's finally opened. We can grab the chest and leave. Do keep in mind that if you've got the water such that it's going to flow into a different one, you will be able to grab the chest before the water lands, but you might get stuck in here and you'll have to use spirit leaves to get out. So do be a little bit careful. Here we've got another puzzle. This one is called silverfish. There are actually two ways of getting the silverfish there, uh, but I'll show you the easiest one, which is sideways down to this bottom layer into the far corner and right up to the top. Uh, and then you just follow this little one block square until eventually you end up in the triangle and can smash it straight into the ice, which will grab you. Please do not place traps, these items right here in the dungeon sack on the ground, because if you do place them on the ground and it runs into it, it will blow up. So please don't do that because then the puzzle will be uncompletable. Here we have another puzzle room which will require a bow, uh, although this time I'd recommend against using a terminator, especially one with duplex, as you want to make sure you're being careful about which blazes you hit. Now this one will also have a secret. If you fly all the way up to the top here and go behind this waterfall, just in line with where the chest will be, you can open this one. Now this puzzle will be solved in two ways depending on the location of the chest. It can either be down there at the bottom, or up there at the top. If the chest is at the top, you have to kill the blazes from highest health to lowest health. If the chest is at the bottom, you have to kill them from lowest health to highest health. Again, I have solvers, so I have to kill the one that's lit up. If I quickly go through this one, you'll see every blaze you hit. There we go, we'll move the chest up a little bit. Like I said, I have to be careful with precise, but then I can use it to my advantage when there's two in a row like that. Uh, not with precise, sorry, with duplex and the fact that I'm using a terminator. If you hit the wrong one, puzzle failed, there's no way to complete it. But once you've killed all of them, the chest will rise up to the top or bottom, uh, which does take a second. And then once it reaches here, right click on it, you'll get your blessing and that's the puzzle done. This is the bomb defuse room. To start with, there will be a pressure plate here and here, and you will either need two people to stand on either side, or if one person runs between them fast enough, that's usually enough to start it. Now there is a way of cheesing through the bars using a ghost pickaxe, a silverfish pet, and enough speed. For whatever reason, I could not get it working. Uh, so just in terms of how this puzzle officially works, it's supposed to have two people communicating. So for this one, for example, you'd go 5428, and then if you come into this room, they would have to type in 5428. This one provides a directional puzzle where one side will have to read the directions to the other and then input them. Uh, and there's a bunch of different puzzles like this as it goes because there is a two minute time limit and it's difficult The best way is always going to be to choose it if I have solved it I'll chuck that in a YouTube short, but I'm not sure why I cannot figure out how to do it for the life of me right now uh, So sorry about that guys, uh, but we'll get back into the next one now We've made it to our next puzzle, which is going to be this teleport room uh, these little end things here, once you stand on them, will teleport you. Uh, and the fastest way of completing this is usually just running diagonally, diagonally, diagonally. If you do have a mod, it will eventually show you which the correct one is. Or just keep running in straight lines until you eventually get there. That will take you to the middle. You can open this chest, at which point it's considered complete. And then that puzzle's done. Another puzzle again, this one called Tic-Tac-Toe. It is just Tic-Tac-Toe. You don't have to win, you only have to draw, although I think it is technically possible to win. Uh, and this one's also got a secret, which you can either grab the lever and then hop through this gap in the leaves, or if you've got a pickaxe, you can just mine your way straight here through that thing. Uh, but once you finish this tic-tac-toe, just get it to the point where the board is draw uh, the board is full rather and you've drawn. Uh, there we go, you're gonna play there, we'll play there, and the game is complete. Then this giant door thing will come down and you'll find the chest behind. Finally, we've got this puzzle here called Box Puzzle. Uh, as you can see, you'll have a bunch of boxes with these buttons on, and pushing these buttons will move them in a particular direction. So where I push that button, it would move this box over to this place. Your goal is to get to the chest at the end here, and you can go through, you can see I've got my silver set up as well, or you can try and figure out the puzzle yourself, but you push through all of these buttons, run through to the end, and you'll be able to grab the chest. 
There are multiple different styles of boxes and it is technically possible to lock yourself out of this one. So do be very careful. Finally, we've got this yellow room right here. Now this is called a mini boss room and you'll notice that the map is a bit different. That's because as I said, each dungeon is gonna be randomly generated. We'll have a random combination of these things and my last dungeon happened to not have one. Now, if we come into this dungeon, uh, this yellow room rather, we take him out. He will be stronger than a normal Lost Adventurer. So especially if it's a Shadow Assassin, make sure you've already got a couple of blessings before you come and fight this guy. But again, blessing, revive stone, the usual for completing a room, as well as some additional score. One more note about yellow room specifically as well. There is a particular mob that can spawn called a King Midas, which will look like a giant crypt in the middle of the room. You only need to destroy that crypt with Super Boom TNT or the sheep or any of the other ways of blowing things up. So do not worry about killing that mob unless you want the best area specifically. Here we have a room that's a little bit different to the puzzle rooms. This one's called a trap room and shows up in orange. Now, for this trap room, you won't be able to use abilities in here, so no teleportation. There are a couple of cheeses you can use. Uh, so, for example, if I were to grab my spring boots, drop those on right there, then you'll be able to see I will be able to use these while in a trap room, uh, which lets me bounce up and skip most of the trap room. There are two types of trap rooms uh, and there's a few instances in which you can use an efficiency 10 pickaxe to mine through the wall and grab secrets. Uh, I'm not going to be going over secret routes in this particular video. We might make another one for that. Uh, it depends how much interest there is, uh, but you'll be able to see here normally you'd have to go up the stairs and do the whole parkour because of these spring boots. I can just bounce to the top come back here to grab this lever, assuming I'm not doing a different type of cheese where you mine through. Fall down, but it doesn't even matter because we just hop our way back up here and we've grabbed that chest. In this instance, the final chest is here. Uh, in the other trap room, you will be able to grab the final chest, which appears in the same position as that one. By coming to the corner, mining diagonally through the wall, again, using an efficiency 10 pickaxe, and opening the chest from that. Uh, just quickly to show you this second secret room, I'm not going to go through it in full, uh, but if you do destroy this crypt here, then you'll see here, I've got my efficiency 10 golden pickaxe. I'll be able to mine into the wall here, uh, and once I've got a couple of blocks mined out, Mine in a straight line until you can just about see the bottom of that chest. There you go. I'm at slightly the wrong and angle. But you click on that chest and you'll see that the room is considered completed as that secret is the final one. Just another thing to keep in mind is that all of these mobs in dungeon are going to count towards a dungeon catacombs bestiary. So this can be really useful for getting yourself some extra combat EXP as well. I had forgotten about this, it just came up because I happened to level up my skeleton grunt while recording this video. But if you're needing combat EXP, have a look at your bestiary, it might just be the best thing to be grinding. Now, once we've completed the blood room, we will end up with two blessings and this portal will open here. Now you'll want to make sure that you have however much score you need to be able to get the level that your team is looking for. Now that might sound a bit confusing, uh, but essentially S plus is the best one, S is the second, and then it goes A, B, C, D, usual rating system. But there are certain drops and chests that will only appear on the basis of your score. So, if you don't get that score and you enter too early, then you won't be able to get the drops that you're looking for. Once you enter this portal, it will take you to the boss fights. Once you beat the boss, you'll be given this scorecard. Now, this will be dependent on how many rooms you completed, how many secrets you got, which, as I said, is different for each floor, and whether or not anybody died. This will determine which chests can spawn. Now, the wooden chest is a freebie. As long as you complete the dungeon, it will always spawn. Uh, and then the other ones are based on what score you got. The best ones being this obsidian chest, which requires an S rank, or a bedrock chest, which will appear about here on later floors, which requires an S plus. S and S plus are the two crucial ones to focus on because S plus that bedrock chest is how you'll get things like a giant sword and a necron's handle and S is how you can get things like the spirit wing, the spirit scepter, etc, etc, etc. S plus chests will start appearing from floor 5 onwards and previously you'll only need to get an S. S plus is 300 score, S is 270. 
Okay, now like I said, I don't have time for the full progression guide today, but just to give you a quick overview of what to do in each of the boss fights, the floor one boss fight is Bonzo. He will spawn in the middle, shoot you and attack you with his magical Bonzo staff orb thingamajigs. Once you've done enough damage to him, he will quote unquote die and then come back to life. This time having an attack where he teleports to the middle and shoots more of these Bonzo Ball Staff things at you, which will do a lot of damage. For the second fight, Scarf, he will instead have four crypts in the corners. After a period of time, these crypts will all spawn various different mobs, priest, warrior, archers and mages. Once all of those mobs have been killed, he will respawn all of them as well as himself, and at that point you can start to damage him. For stage 3, the Professor, there will be four Guardians in the corners. You can kill these Guardians by any means, but you have to make sure they all die at the same time. So if you're a relatively new party, you might want to lower their health and then coordinate a combined attack rather than everybody going all out. For stage 4, Thorn, you'll have to kill mobs in the middle until Spirit Bears spawn. When you kill the Spirit Bears, a bow will spawn and you use this bow to shoot the flying ghast, which is Thorn. For stage 5, you'll probably want to hide near the gate. The tank will have to do some funky business, but we'll get into that in next video. Uh, and then you'll want to kill the correct livid. There are mods for this or it's the colour of the ceiling. For stage 6, firstly there will be terracottas. Ideally, you'll want to get this to sub 40 seconds because killing each terracotta removes the timer. These terracottas will do a fair bit of damage, run around, kill as many as you can. Once they're all dead and the timer's up, four giants will spawn in each corners, kill these giants, and finally Saiden will appear, kill him, bish bash bosh, floor complete. And finally floor 7, the most complicated floor, except for 7. The most complicated floor uh, involves firstly using either a jerry sheen gun, spring boots or a bonzo staff and bouncing off the lava to collect crystals. You then put these crystals on a pedestal. Once two crystals are on the two pedestals, you can move the first boss, which is Maxor, into the laser beam, at which point he becomes vulnerable to damage. Repeat this until he's dead. You'll then drop down into a second area in which there are pressure plate style things in the corners. Firstly, Storm will use a lightning attack, which will hit all enemies, which will hit all players after a countdown, and will instantly kill you if you don't have a Bonzo mask, with a cloak, gyrokinetic wand, or are stood hiding under the pillar. Afterwards, someone can stand on the giant buttons in the corners to move the pillar down, crush Storm, and he becomes vulnerable to damage. Next, we get onto the point where Goldor will chase you. At this point, you have to do terminals and devices, which are their own little puzzle. Just imagine Among Us. You're playing Among Us, running around in a square. After you've played Among Us for a bit, then he will chase you down a corridor, at which point he becomes vulnerable to damage and kill him. And then finally, you get to Necron himself, who will be in the middle. He'll then proceed to chase you, and once you've done a certain amount of damage, we'll go to the middle and do an implosion attack, which will gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger until it one-shots everybody. From this, you'll want to stand on the edge of his platforms in the middle, do as much damage as you can, and then complete him. Master mode is pretty much the same, except everything's harder. M2, it spawns extra mobs. M3, you have to hit him eight times instead of four, and there's three spirit bears. There is a dupe for that, but again, next video. Five is pretty much the same, except the tank has to do some slightly different strategies. Six is pretty much the same, except there's extra giants that are a lot stronger. And M7 is pretty much the same, except it has an extra stage, M7 final five stage with a boss with a king thing, where you have to grab different crystals from different platforms, bring them all to little cauldron bowl thingies, and then kill dragons while they're in the area of their respective statues. I know that's a bit of a, a speedy way of explaining all the bosses, uh, but like I said, this video is half an hour long and I'll make a proper guide next week. Okay, remember guys, as always, if you've got any questions about Hypixel Skyblock, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and I will see you guys in another stream. Bye guys!